had an awesome time painting. Um, not everybody's paintings are done, but it's my awesome painting. The secret is stencils, I've been told. All right, so today we're talking about Pitch Tank. So Pitch Tank was part of a greater event called Freedom Fest. Freedom Fest is put on by Mark Skousen, who is a financial industry newsletter publisher. Um, has a you know, newsletter you buy and subscribe to, and then you learn what his predictions are for the economy and the stock market and stuff like that. So Freedom Fest was the overarching event. Pitch Tank was an event within the event. And then we had a third event, which was called the Mastermind Investment Club, which I'll talk about in a minute. So Freedom Fest, we had 4,000 people. It was at the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, there's our sign, Angel Investors Network with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. Uh, this is the Eiffel Tower of Paris. This is my Eiffel Tower selfie. <laughs> uh, that's the hotel, what I could fit in, the can in my iPhone picture. Uh, no, this is Paris. This is the Paris. It, it's funny, Bellagio is right across the street and they look exactly the same. same exa I wonder if the same designer did both of them. Uh, that is the pool. Um, interesting trend that I noticed in casinos. There are now virtual blackjack dealers. Those are great. I love them. You don't even need a, they don't even need to pay a person to take your money anymore. You just put your credit card and they just take it. I look for them. You look for those. Can you tell me why? It's for educational purposes. Something different. You don't have to interact with a human being. You don't have to oh interact with a human being to lose your money. Oh my God. Carmine, you could just give me your credit card and we'll just, we'll just take it right there. Um, this is the Davidoff kiosk in the Paris Hotel and Casino. And right next to it, I guess, because you have the Davidoff kiosk, you need an oxygen bar. So after you're done smoking, you can go get some oxygen that's actually fresh air. It's amazing what they're doing. This is one of the restaurants we, at Paris where they have a $777 hamburger which I did not eat. Um, I did not know apparently that, you, that lobster on a burger is good, nor did I know that apparently you're supposed to age your balsamic dressing that we buy at Wegmans for like $2 for 100 years. And of course it comes with a bottle of Dom Perignon. I did not see anyone order it. Max was very, my 10 year old was very disappointed I didn't get it once he heard about that. Uh, they also have a Giordano's, which is original Chicago deep dish pizza. So we had to, um, I have Giordano's flown in from Chicago every year on my birthday because it's my favorite pizza and they happen to have a Giordano's next door. So this is what real deep dish pizza is. In Buffalo, we don't really know what it is because the deep dish we get is like this and it's really supposed to be like two inches thick. So and what, what is this? That's a pizza. But what, what's, what's in, I don't know what's pizza, but what's Ah, what's in that? Uh, oh. cheese. Sauce, cheese, in that version, that's the Chicago classic. So it's got green peppers and mushrooms and pepperoni and sausage. It's no, that's a green pepper. <laughs> so that's, it's so funny. We were, I had dinner uh, at Giordano's with um, some guys from Europe and one of them just couldn't get over the crust because the crust isn't pizza crust, it's pastry crust. It's like the crust that would be on like a cheesecake and he, he kept, I can't get enough of this crust. this crust. He was cutting off the crust. He was full, but kept cutting off crust to eat the crust. Apparently in Europe, that's a novelty. I don't know. Um, one of our 20 pitch tank contestants, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is a company called Ron Motorsports. And they had the coolest demo of any of the companies because they brought their sports, their supercar. This is a hydrogen electric powered roadster. It goes 200 miles an hour and it gets 600 miles on a charge. No gas at all. Um, the funny, I asked Ron, I said, gorgeous car, gotta ask a question. How come you didn't paint it Ferrari red? Red's the most popular sports car color. He said, we were going to, but the night before it was due to get painted, I woke up, I had a dream about this color. And I said, we gotta paint it this color. But apparently there's only a limited number of paints in the car industry, a limited number of colors, which is my, my wife is unhappy that her minivan doesn't come in sexy colors or colors she think is sexy. Right. So he said, this color didn't exist. We looked for two weeks in every single car manufacturer and looked for paint and we couldn't find it. It took us 48 different tests and it's actually a layer, Christine will appreciate this, of three different colors to create that color and a $20,000 paint job to do it. 
I said, okay, well, I'll take, I said, has anyone offered to trade you marketing for a car? I'll take one in red. <laughs> he did not go for that offer. I thought this was really an uh, interesting idea. In the airport, on the way there, I flew through Atlanta. On the way back, I flew through Minneapolis. Minneapolis had a chiropractor in the airport, which I've always thought would be a brilliant idea because you're stuck on an airplane seat for hours and hours. How come there's never any chiropractors in the airport? So I thought that was really smart to have a chiropractic in the office in the airport. The only issue you're going to have is no repeat customers because I'm going to go in off my flight, get adjusted, and go home. No one's flying to Minneapolis just to get adjusted in the airport. I said, so he's got great foot traffic, but probably not much repeat business because how many times do I fly through Minneapolis? Did you ask him? Did you stop and ask him? Um, he was adjusting other He did not have time to have a marketing conversation. I tried. There, were, there was a line out the door, and Minneapolis is a pretty busy, busy airport because a lot of airlines fly through it. Um, this is the front of the room where our event was. That's the back. What are you talking about? Oh, no, that is not, I do not know who that is. That's just a random person. But I guess, yeah, really quick, it looks a little bit like him. Uh, that's the back. Um, that's when it, the part I could, the back half that's full, when I could capture it with my camera. Uh, I was one of the four preliminary judges for Pitch Tank. So we had three waves. We had thousands of applicants of businesses who wanted to participate. Um, we narrowed it down to 22. And then at the event, 22 got to those 22 came and made their pitch. They're like Shark Tank, three minute. They had a five minutes to make their pitch. We narrowed them down from 22 to five. And then the top five finalists got to pitch on stage in front of all 4,000 people. And Kevin Harrington, Steve Forbes, um, Greg Ryder of Angel Network and Bernd Ullman were the celebrity judges who narrowed it down and picked the winner. Bernd Ullman was the CEO of FUBU for Damon John. He was the CEO of Donna Karen. He did the largest celebrity deal ever where he got Jennifer Lopez into Kohl's and Kohl's you know, gave her guarantees of at least $3.3 billion in clothes would, that they would buy. Um, so those were our four celebrity judges. This was the criteria we used to evaluate them. So this is Angel Investors Network and Kevin Harrington's criteria, so you can't resell this. Um, the, we judged them on eight criteria. We had to give them a score of one to 10. This was our attempt to quantify, so each contestant had a score and we could then pick winners. A market opportunity and their solution, their team, if they brought them with, if we got to meet them, who was on their board, who was on their executive team, how well, what their plan was to grow, um, what progress they had made so far, because some of these people were startups and some were established, their financial projections, what their numbers were going to be and how realistic those were, because there were people who said, oh, we're gonna do $100 million in year five, and you're starting at zero, not as realistic. Um, what they wanted the money for and what they were gonna use it for. So we had a number of people who forgot to ask which I don't get because we coached the 22 applicants ahead of time before they got there, before they made their pitch. And some of them still, maybe they were nervous, forgot to say, and this is how much money we're looking for, and this is the percentage of equity we're willing to offer in our company. You know, kind of like the first thing they do on Shark Tank. Hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm from here, I'm here seeking 300,000 for 10%. How well they presented, because we had some great businesses that had lousy presentations. So they didn't get to make it to the finals and the risk. Did they understand the risks to their business and did they have a plan for addressing them? Uh, this is all of us, Kevin, Steve Forbes, Burnt, Michael Fugler, who's a securities lawyer, Greg, and then the other judges and myself on stage. Uh, this is a new client of ours. This is Nikki Lund. She is a celebrity fashion designer. So she designs clothes for Blake Shelton, Carrie Underwood, um, Jay, you know, Britney Spears, all of the household name celebrities. I did not realize this, but celebrities don't dress themselves. They have people who design, they have stylists who pick out their clothes. And then the stylists pick designers who design for them. Nikki's one of the designers. Um, so Nikki has been designing for all of these people. She's got two, she's also a singer and a songwriter. She's got two songs that went to the top 12 on the charts, on the dance music charts. And so 
she decided she's come on board because she wants to stop being the best kept secret. The stylists use her to make the clothes that they give the celebrities. She wants to establish her own brand. So she's launched her own clothing line at NikkiLund.com and wants us to help her market that. So we're really excited about that. And we're going to launch her stylist celebrity podcast. And hopefully we can get some of her famous friends to show up on the show. So then we can introduce ourselves to them and say, hey, we can help you too. Uh, this is the Mastermind Investment Club. So this was the third event. This was the last night of Freedom Fest in the day after. So Greg, Michael, Kevin, and Bernd have launched a Mastermind Investment Club. So it's a mastermind group like this one, but specifically for the purposes of investing. So the premise is, if you ever watch Shark Tank and you see a deal and you say, oh man, I wish I could invest in that, now you can. So Kevin is bringing all of his deals to the table. Bernd is bringing all of his deals to the table. And the point is you pay to be in the group and you get to hang out with Kevin and Bernd and Michael and Greg. And Kevin brings in the companies because he's taking 10,000 pitches a year. He's bringing in the ones he's investing in and allowing members to participate. So one of our members, um, our group helped fund Coolbox. If you ever saw Coolbox on Shark Tank, the reinvention of the toolbox, it's funding a couple other of his deals. And that is the purpose of the club, if you want to get in on one of those deals that otherwise you couldn't have access to. Uh, this was the overhead shot of the first meeting of our group. Um, we started with 22 members. Our next event is in November, and our goal is in the next 12 months to get to 1,000. So we have a giant conference just to ourselves. So they're all paying to be in it. And then they can, they're not under any obligation, but they can invest in the deals that the group presents. And we took a number of pitches at the club for the purposes of the members learning, here's how, we, uh, here's how Kevin evaluates a deal, here's the questions he asks when someone pitches him, so they can learn it for their own investing, and so they can learn about the deals and decide if they want to be in on them. So we're gonna talk about the 20 different businesses that participated, and we'll talk about what we learned and how we can sort of apply it to your business. That makes sense? Okay, any questions so far? Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yes. Redbox, Vidbox, they were one of the 20. Were they? So they got to the top five. They did not win. I'm going to go over the 20, tell you which were the five, and then tell you who won. Okay, so the first company was a company called Asset Quest. They do something really interesting. So if you, if you are a builder and you want to buy 50 lots to build a neighborhood, in a place like Buffalo, you just go buy 50 lots. In Southern Florida, those 50 lots are owned by 50 different people. And builders don't have the time to try and track down who are the 50 different owners and then make offers to them because if they find out that one company is buying up all this land, the prices go way up. So what AssetQuest does is they've developed this software program that identifies all the 50 different owners, name, email, phone number, contact information, address, everything in the public records database of who these people are, and then can contact them. It creates, in this case, 50 different LLCs and makes offers, individual offers on all of them so that the people don't know that there's one company buying up everything because all the companies have different names. So, um, they made it to the top five. It was a really cool, it's a really cool business model. Uh, next was Celestia Health. And um, I'll put this in the Facebook group. So if you want to look at any of their websites, you can. Celestia Health, this guy, this engineer invented, it's an insert that goes into your bra and it measures three things. Um, it does early, super early detection of any breast, of breast cancer. It is also a Fitbit, steps, heart rate, temperature. It also measures ovulation. So if you are trying to conceive a child, after you wear this for a month or two, it will tell you your two most like days when you are ready to conceive. And it has an app on your phone, so it tells you all of this. And it gives you a readout any, every day. Um, so it was a really cool company, uh, really cool concept. Obviously, he's gonna save some lives. And I introduced him to Burnt because I said, you know, hey, what's your biggest challenge other than marketing this thing and getting investment capital? 
And he said, well, I'm the engineer, I'm the medical guy, I'm the designer of the product, but I, I'm not a CEO. He said, I need a real CEO, preferably, it needs to be a woman-led company, someone preferably with fashion and medical experience. And I said, hey, Bernd, you were CEO for Donna Karen, you were CEO for FUBU, do you know any female CEOs with fashion and healthcare experience who might be interested in coming on and doing this project? And he said, absolutely. So Peter from Celestia was very happy. Um, Champions Basketball League, they are starting a summer NBA basketball league. So it's gonna be all NBA players playing in the summer and they're starting with 16 cities and they'll be in 24 next year. And there's gonna be dozens of games over the summer. They've got deals with Adidas for shoes. They've got deals with ESPN to air all the games. And it's $25 a seat. So it's gonna be way more accessible than a normal NBA game. And they are, they are crowdfunding the ownership. So you can become an owner of a team, for a th part owner for a thousand bucks. And for a thousand bucks, we're locking us in, it's an escape room, we gotta figure it out. Um, so for a thousand bucks, you get to sit like courtside seats, you get to go to the meet and greet and hang out with the players, you get to do, you get all kinds of access that you otherwise couldn't get in the NBA. Um, so they made it, um, so they, that was really cool. Um, Enterprise Education Solutions, they came up with a college financial planning software. So it fills out your, all your FAFSA and all your kids' documents to get them into college. It fills out all the scholarships and financial aid. It has a database of every single school and every single scholarship in the country. So you, it has your kids' information. It matches them to scholarships that they might qualify for and helps you dramatically reduce the amount of money you actually have to pay for college. So I said, how are you selling this? And he said, well, we want to get financial advisors to do college planning in their practices. And I said, I just happen to have a large list of those folks. We can help you with that. I got pitched at for months ago. Where are they out of? Um, where are they out of? Uh, San Diego? Okay. Maybe different. Apparently, there's more than one company. Same thing, same concept. Only they marketed it or they, they pitched me a little bit differently. Okay. Cool. But they kind of hid that from the, you know, they pitched that we need financial advisors to help these families because in order to qualify, many of them have to repurpose their assets. That's exactly true. Okay. But what they didn't say until you really got into the nitty gritty is that you were going to really do the marketing for the college planning thing and then hopefully some of those people that enrolled would be families that would then need the services of financial advisors. So you were really going to be at the forefront pitching their couch for program. Very, yeah, so this is slightly different than that. They are also are building um, an app that will do all of this on your phone. So think of it like TurboTax for college planning. Ergo Gamers, um, they built a ergonomic add-on to any chair for your keyboard and your mouse and your drink. So if you are, there, they were pitching the computer gaming aspect of it. So you could sit in a relaxing, any chair, and instead of sitting like in a regular chair, like one of these, you could sit in a recliner or something really comfortable and do this at the same time. And he had a very cool demo chair. And I said, yes, the gaming market and the esports market are huge, and that's awesome. What about everybody at work? I said, my team would love more comfortable chairs that they then could be ergonomically working on this on. What about the office market? Um, so he said, I haven't invented one of those yet. That's a great idea. I said, I gotta just modify it probably a little bit and you got an even bigger play. Uh, Floatinator, all right, imagine a Frisbee made out of styrofoam. Imagine a cup in the middle of it that holds your cup. So you put your cup in this and it floats next to you in the pool and won't spill. So in case you're in the pool and you want to have your drink with you and you don't want to put it on the side of the pool, you want it wherever you're floating in the pool, this is your drink flotation device. I did not know this was a problem. Apparently it's a problem because they're selling a bunch of them. I was, you know on Shark Tank when they say, when they laugh at a product like the Squatty Potty and they're like, how much are you really selling? And the guy says like $2 million and they go, oh my God, it's real. People are really buying this thing. I was surprised, people are really buying this thing. Um, I said, right now they're selling online, they're selling at marinas, they're selling at beaches, they're selling on their website. I said, 
you could sell this like the old goal by the inch model. You could make this a business opportunity. So ship me a hundred, I'll go down to the beach and sell them at a markup and keep the difference. I said, you need to, and this is not meant to be sexist or stereotypical in any way, you need to go on Craigslist, you need to hire some bikini models to walk around the beaches carrying these things and you'll sell them out in no time. And they said, we're already doing that, but we hadn't thought about it as a business opportunity, we were hiring them. I said, no, you sell them to them and then they resell them. So apparently we need drink floaters. Um, Heads Up Pets was a life preserver for dogs but she's invented this collar that goes around their neck. Apparently normal life preserve, if you actually have a life jacket for your dog, the way they're designed, the dog still drowns. It floats, but it doesn't keep its head up. So if the dog gets tired of floating and doing the doggy paddle, they drowned anyway. So she invented this water inflatable collar that keeps the dog afloat above the water so they don't die. And she, she, I said, is there a market for this? I mean, yes, they're dog owners. I didn't even know there were dog life jackets. I'm not a dog guy, but how many people need dog life jackets? And she said, well, here's the screenshot from our Google keyword planner that shows there's over 140,000 searches a month for dog life jacket. I said, okay, I did not know this was a problem. Good for you. Um, and every, during the conference at her booth, people kept coming up and telling stories of how their dog, either how their dog had drowned and I, they wish they had this product, or that they'd had her product and say it saved their dog's life. I said, okay, we're saving dogs. Uh, Skingenics was the next franchise sensation in the global skincare market. I did not understand the pitch. None of us understood the pitch. We found out later, because I talked to Nikki, and Nikki's like, did you see that guy? I love that product. And I said, what's the product? We thought he was selling a spa franchise. And she said, no, 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 he's got this machine that goes over your face and it reads your face and it creates a custom skincare, like cream, all the different stuff you, moisturizers, all the different stuff you use on the spot customized to your skin. I said, that's really cool. He did not mention that in the pitch. That would have been helpful. Um, new energy systems, they've created a new solar panel that instead of being glass that holds the panels is Plastic, which apparently absorbs more sun, traps more energy, and costs less to make. Um, Nikki, who you saw, she's launching her clothing line. Um, Oasis Technology, they have this product called Titan that goes in front of your firewall and prevents, apparently, most of our firewalls on our servers. If you have servers, we got hacked a year ago and it was a nightmare. This apparently prevents that from happening. Um, Organoponics is a client of ours. They've invented what will be um, the number one indoor hydroponic growing system. So you grow plants in water, inside, all year round, and it's fresh, organic, healthy produce. And then instead of paying $2 a head of lettuce at Wegmans, it's 50 cents. So it saves money, saves the environment, saves water, saves dirt, all sorts of good stuff. Um, Paula Dean, the celebrity chef, she has two restaurants that are grossing about 15 million a year each, and she wants to expand her restaurant line along the south. So she wants to open more restaurants. What was really interesting, which I had no idea, um, they're in Clarence, New York. Her restaurant company is in Clarence, New York. And I, they were the guys who came up to me and said, did you know there's a hurricane in Buffalo? We heard you're from Buffalo too. And I said, where are you from? I said, I'm in Williamsville, where are you guys? Clarence. I said, really, who do you work for? Paula Dean. why are you in Clarence? Because she hired them away from Delaware North. They were running one of Delaware North's restaurant divisions here. And she went, found them, hired them, and they said, can we stay in Buffalo, in Clarence? Can we run the company from Clarence? And she said, sure. So who knew? So they said, she's here all the time. I said, can I get to the next meeting, please? Um, reliable One Resources was something to do with water desalination in the oil industry with fracking. Apparently fracking produces bad water. They apparently fixed that. We did not understand the pitch. Um, Ron Motor Group was the supercar that you just saw. That is not their main product. Their main product is like public transportation, buses, trains, making those hydrogen electric powered. And they are apparently doing a ton of it in Europe. 
Um, Smart Planet Technologies, they made it to the finals. They apparently, when you get a coffee cup, a paper coffee cup to go, they're 93% paper, 7% plastic. So you can't recycle them. They're not recyclable. And over 100 million cups end up in landfills every single year because you can't recycle them because they have plastic. So they invented a new coating for the paper cup, um, not made out of plastic, so they're the, full, the only fully recyclable paper cup. They have a contract with the largest coffee chain in the UK, which is called Kostya, has 4,000 locations. They are not manufacturing the cups, they're just licensing them. So right now they're working on Starbucks and Tim Hortons and all of the household name coffee chains. Uh, Taritaka Enterprises invented a thing to hold golf balls on the outside of your golf bag. So you don't have to dig in your bag and find a golf ball when you lose one. Um, I thought it was a cool little gadget and one of our, it's funny, one of our judges said, well I would never use it even though I play golf. And I said, so I'm not voting for him. And I said, well why wouldn't you use it? And he said, because I don't lose golf balls. I said, what do you, how is that possible? He said, well because I shoot about a 74. I'm a really good golfer. I, I play one ball for 18 holes, so it's not, I, I, I wouldn't use it. I said, okay, I lose about 20, but all right. Um, Toilet Mate. Toilet Mate is going to be a Kevin Harrington infomercial product. Toilet Mate is a shield that goes over your toilet um, when you're trying to plunge your toilet. So the water does not splash back up at you or at a plumber or overflow. So, there's, so their premise is you don't need a plumber anymore. You can just put this over your toilet and plunge it yourself because it, so it won't make a, and it won't make a mess. Um, let's see here. Uh, yellowdogs.com, they built an app that is going to connect day laborers to construction companies. So it's like the Uber of day labor. And uh, yellow dog, yellowdogs.com. Um, my question, my concern was, all of these people who are day laborers are some of them are they all le are some of them illegal immigrants? Is that going to be an issue if you're connecting and taking a percentage? And they said, "Oh well, we don't know who they we don't know and we don't care." And I said, "You're going to care when the Department of Labor starts knocking on your door and says you owe us 100 million dollars in tax payroll taxes because we've decided to classify these people as subcontract as contractors or employees of yours." Um, so we did not like that they didn't have an answer for that one. Um, in Vidbox Mexico, which was taking Redbox and duplicating it in Mexico. So the final five were Asset Quest, Vidbox, um, Smart Planet Tech, uh, Paula Dean, and Revive. Revive is an artificial electric defibrillator. Uh, the kind, you know, the kind that stick on the wall at big buildings or at sporting events. So apparently the reason why those don't get used, apparently people die every day and they're near an AED, but no one uses it. One is because they're big and heavy. Two, they don't know how and they're afraid they're, and they're afraid they're gonna actually kill somebody or do it wrong. So, <coughs> so they invented an, <coughs> an AED that's the size of a water bottle. It's like this big. It is powered by your iPhone, takes 2% of your battery per shock, and it runs on an iPhone app that talks you through the process, tells you exactly what to do, and it has sensors that attach, when you attach the sensors to the person's chest, if, shock, if they don't have a shockable rhythm, if it won't help, it will not allow you to shock them. So you can't shock someone wrong, you can't shock them by mistake, and you can't accidentally kill somebody, and you can't say, hey, this is be f this will be fun, let's try shocking each other and see what happens, it won't work. It does, well, the first version iteration of their product comes with a phone that is, the only thing on it is the app. Their next version is going to be a app for iPhone and any type of phone that as soon as you plug the thing in, it goes, gets the app, downloads it and starts it. So that you don't have to know, I should go get an app. Um, they were the winner. Revive, because they're reviving people. They were the winner. They were the winner. Out, of all them Out of all them companies. It's funny, they weren't the most successful business already because they have a prototype and they have patents. They have a working prototype, but they haven't started selling yet because they're getting busy getting FDA approval.
Um, and one of the concerns on the risk segment was, are you going to get this approved? And they said, well, the chairman of our board is the FDA executive in charge of approving AEDs. You know, she retired a year ago and now there's somebody new in her place. So we got her to be the chairman of our board. And she says that, you know, she would approve it. So we're assuming she's shepherding it through. So we're assuming we'll get approved. So I'm curious about Yeah. Yes, so they're clients of ours as well. So when they competed a year ago and made it to the finals a year ago, they had 100 machines rolled out. This is taking a, a red box machine and putting it in Mexico. So it's just called VidBox. They have the license to put machines in all of Mexico and they bought 4,000 machines from Redbox that they are retrofitting to put in Mexico. It's got to, all the content's gotta be, the movies all have to be in Spanish. It's gotta, they, you know, they gotta repaint it. It's a different software program. So a year ago, they had 4,000 machines and they had 100 in Mexico. They now, have, they've, they now have 400 out in Mexico and 3,600 left to go. So they keep raising money because it costs $4,000 to change a machine over from Redbox to Vidbox. So they keep raising money to put more machines out to make more money. Um, so that again, Mitch Lowe, the co-founder of Redbox and Netflix is their chairman of their board and the Redbox's CFO is their C came over and is their CFO, and the CEO from Blockbuster to Mexico, when Blockbuster existed and was in Mexico, is on their board too. So, I mean, they're doing well. It just takes a while to. He said, even if someone wrote him a check for the money to retrofit all the 3,600 machines, it would take them 18 months to get them out. They're all sitting in their factory in Mexico waiting to roll after they get redone. The machines cost a lot more. The machines are like twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, because that's right. They're in and out. They, they, they're doing all the rent. So what they got was they got a deal from Redbox because Mitch Lowe is on their board to go buy four thousand used machines at a dirt cheap price, and then they just have to change the software, change the movies, repaint them, and put them out there. Something interesting I found that was really cool was there is a company that's making this. It's like the size of a stamp. It's a device, and you'll all appreciate this. It's the size of a stamp. You can stick it wherever you want or put it in like a fake rock and put it wherever you want. And within 100 meters, if anyone walks within 100 meters who has an Android phone, you can put a push, notif a push notification on their phone. So I don't know you, you don't me, but I walk within 100 meters of a restaurant, up on my phone pops a notification that sends me wherever you want me to go. So I said to Sandro, I said, you need 4,000 of these. You need to put them on every Vidbox machine because your machines are all in 7-Eleven and Walmart and all these stores. Anyone walks in, you could have something pop up going, hey, come rent a movie. Here's a coupon to go rent a movie. Try us right now. And then I started, and, he, and he was, he's like, how do I get 4,000 of them? Sign me up. And I started thinking how, we could, how our clients could use it. So where do your customers go? So if you're in insurance, do they go see their accountant? Do they go see their lawyer? Where else do they hang out? Where, could, where would a bunch of your customers go where you could put one of these, have the signal pop up and acquire other people's customers? I said, we're gonna, I'm gonna go put one on our accounting firm. I'm gonna go put one on our corporate attorney's office. Like just toss it in the landscaping. I'm not asking for permission. I'm just gonna toss it, play, to I, I bought, I started by, I bought eight. They're 10 bucks a month. I mean, we get one client, we got a years and years worth of our 10 bucks a month. So I'm just gonna start tossing them everywhere that business owners might go. I thought about strategically placing them outside BNI meetings before the BNI meeting has happened. So I'll toss one at Milo's at like six in the morning and then turn it off at nine when the meeting's over. Where can you spy on people? So you can turn it off from your phone. Yeah, it's a web-based app because you customize whatever the message says anytime you want. Car dealers, if you're doing PNC. Yeah, you could go after your competition. Giancarlo should have one here to hit all their customers, but they should also go put it outside of black and blue. 
you put them in every car dealer, toss them in the grass at every car dealer, and you'd be printing money, I would think. So it is a brave new world. Um, so those were cool things we learned from Pitch Tank. Um, we were working with, um, we're working on proposals for a number of those clients. Um, there, was something, well, there were two that were really interesting that weren't part of the pitch tank. They were companies that flew in to do the pitch at the Mastermind Investment Club. One of them is a company where this, it's a med medical technology company. He's invented, um, it's a chromosomal DNA test. So it detects cancer really early. It detects birth defects. So the five or six different tests you get if you're a pregnant woman along the way, you can replace with one non-invasive test. Um, and their customers are places like Quest, LabCorp, the big t where you go to get all your blood work. And so Kevin says, Kevin, he, guy gives his pitch, and Kevin says, I'm all about customer acquisition cost. Who's your ideal customer? The guy says, this type of person at Quest or LabCorp, this executive. And Kevin turns to me and goes, can we get those guys digitally? And I said, yeah, they're on LinkedIn. And he said, Ramesh, were they on LinkedIn? Were you on, or are they on LinkedIn? Have you done the research? Oh yes, they're on LinkedIn. We have a big list of all of them that we can collaborate. Sorry, that's a bad version of his accent. Sorry, Ramesh, if you're watching. Um, and he says, Kevin says, okay, I'm in. Um, that was really cool. Another one that Kevin is involved with is called Horse Races Now. It is a horse racing app on your smartphone. Um, and the point of it, they have daily, they have every racetrack in the country is on there. You can watch any horse race. You can check out the horses. You can check out the jockeys. You can see stats. And what they're going, they're, what they're evolving to, they, got, they have 600,000 users, 100,000 user, active users who are watching multiple races every month. And they're adding the ability in places where it's legal for you to bet on the horse race in your app. Because right now their users are, are watching the horse race on their phone, but they're placing bets on a betting app that they don't own. So he said, if we add betting, we've already surveyed our 600,000 users, and this percent have said they are already betting online on horse racing, and we'd place the bet with you if we didn't have to leave the app, it will be a ginormous com company. His business partner was talking to me and he said, listen, this is a digital marketing dream. We have 600,000 users. We haven't spent a dime on advertising yet. Our customer acquisition cost is pennies right now. He said, can you imagine, Kevin has wanted you to work on this because can you imagine what it'll be if we put some money behind it? I said, how big is horse racing? How big is the horse racing betting industry? And apparently it's billions of dollars. I did not know this. I knew nothing about horse racing. Oh. So that was cool stuff that we got from Pitch Tank.